Okay, so we are back on a Zoom call again, Mel, um, because we are both not technical wizards, um, apparently. Or we didn't, uh, or I did do my research and then I completely forgot to put it all in action and our Instagram live didn't quite go uh, to plan yesterday. I blame Instagram and the technical glitches, not us at all. Um, Never. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we're just going to go and repeat or go over what we spoke about, right? So basically we wanted to join forces and go on Instagram live and kind of unite us as uh, women and how we feel as coaches, but also how we want to change uh, women's lives and how they feel um, about their bodies and know that they're not the only ones. Um, so we're basically just going to talk today about body image and kind of the influence of social media um, and what the scales mean to us. Um, so if you want to do your introduction, it's going to be maybe the third time I've heard all of this now. <laughs> but practice makes perfect. Yeah. I know, it's just getting, it's getting sharper and sharper each time I do it. Um, okay, so, so yeah, so I kind of went on Instagram a couple weeks ago after a podcast that we were on and just shared a little bit about my um, own struggles with self-esteem. Um, I definitely have, no matter what weight I've been at or what accomplishments that I had kind of um, achieved throughout my life, I've always struggled with self-esteem. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I finally was kind of like enough is enough and started to um, figure out how to uh, love myself a little bit more and it not be completely based on uh, what I looked like because that's what was controlling my life. So a quick kind of recap of the history. Um, when I was younger, I grew up as uh, a only girl in a family of boys and um, it wasn't until later that my sister was born and then um, I was really into sports and dancing actually of, of all things. Uh, <laughs> I was a big dancer, um, athletics. I went on um, into university and played volleyball for um, the school and so that was like a big identity thing for me. That's how um, even kind of at a young age, I started to realize that like being good at sports, um, people accepted you a bit more. Um, and, and even like into high school, I was never, I was kind of like a stick, no, no curves or nothing. And, um, you know, it was made fun of a little bit for that, but for the most part, um, as I started to kind of blossom and get good with sports and all of a sudden people are like oh I like you you know I want to be friends with you or you know start getting boyfriends or whatever it is um it quickly became kind of my story that the way I looked and being kind of successful was a way to get liked and so I kind of went with that and that um that kind of I guess created the ongoing unkindness that I created in my life for a long time so when I finished um, a university, I kind of had just come off of, again, this identity crisis of um, being an athlete, and that's all I really knew. And also, you know, in university, just kind of living a, living a very different life. I'd come away from home, um, eating junk food all the time, eating whatever I wanted, but I was training two or three times a, a day as a collegiate athlete. Um, mm. I started lifting, so I was doing all the stuff, and I, and I could. I was really young, right? So I was just eating like crap, not taking care of my body at all. And then when I stopped all that, um, I was left with, okay, well, what am I now? If I'm not an athlete, um, if I'm not in school, I don't have this like huge community of friends constantly at you, like what is my life? And um, at that point, I really started to struggle with um, weight fluctuations and change of my body, um, as well as really not knowing, uh, not being proud of anything anymore. And I suffered from a lot of um, various eating disorders. I was pretty much in desperation to hold on to what I had um, kind of told myself I needed to look like in order to be accepted. Yeah. And so I did, you know, tons of different, all the fad diets you could possibly imagine um, would restrict calories massively and then go on big binges and then beat myself up about it um, to the point of, punishing myself where I would either um, throw up my food or I would train like hours and hours and hours on a treadmill type thing. Um, or I would starve myself for 
for the whole day afterwards just as punishment and um really had a bad a bad relationship with food um i had i was diagnosed with crohn's disease early on as well in my university degree um sorry in my university time and that was another kind of thing around anxiety and food and weight fluctuation and change of energy and gut health um it was quite a struggle for me to to find how to heal myself so I really it was like I was out of control I didn't I didn't know I had this autoimmune disease was taking over my life and I couldn't control my health and my energy and, and anything anymore and it was really overwhelming um so yeah so continued on um on top of that I had my daughter really young I was 22 when I mm -hmm. had her and so that was quite a struggle um for me with a body image issue and self-esteem issue as well um it was to go through pregnancy at such a young age and then you know be see all my friends are out you know living the, their best lives at you know early 20s and now all of a sudden yeah. i have this baby to take care of and my body was completely changed and um i didn't know much about why i had changed other than you know just being pregnant and i i was just you know desperate again to get my pre-baby body back um, which is not <laughs> now I know so much more about what that even means. But then I was like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm only 23. It's not fair that, you know, I, I look like this. So, um, anyways, I, I got into CrossFit. That was kind of my next big thing after sports. Um, I did find that that gave me something to keep that competitive drive alive in. And that also led me down the coach route. So I had, um, I got my master's in immunology. I'd been studying kind of kinesiology and anatomy and physiology. So I knew a lot about the body. And when I got into CrossFit, I was naturally pretty good at it. So I was you know, <laughs> coming from an athletic Back background. Yourself. Uh, I was like, oh, look at me, right? So I'm like, yeah, here I go. Um, and so I, I discovered that like, oh, I could actually do this for a living on side of what I was trying to do um, as well with like my master's degree and PhD and stuff. So I uh, went on and I got, you know, uh, my, all my coaching certifications. And um, from there, I think that lit the fire even more of negative spiraling of body images because then you, you are, there's a whole nother expectation that I had created in my mind that I needed to look like, I needed to be the fittest in the room. I needed to have all my shit together all the time. Um, you know, these like body weight fluctuations that I was constantly going through. Um, I was really, really ashamed of it. I, um, you know, I'd go into like a pretty bad spot of depression when my weight would go up because I felt like I was a fraud. I was like, oh, I'm yeah. you know, trying to help all these women lose weight and, you know, be this, uh, you know, picture perfect person, but I can't even do that. And so anyway, so then fast forward, um, I was, I had some health issues again and was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Um, and it then all of a sudden started to really click the more I read about it. It's like, Oh my gosh, like I was beating myself. So like up so much about my weight fluctuations, my energy fluctuations, like even recovery from the gym. It takes me, you know, if I do a really hard training session, it'll take me three or four days to fully recover from it. Um, and it all of a sudden put it, it just, for me, it put a piece into the puzzle that was missing for so long. And, yeah. um, but at the same time, I was put on medication for it and lost a lot of weight. So I was going through kind of this growth period where I was like, right, I don't want to be attached to a scale anymore. I don't want my worth to come from the way I look um, or how great I am at the, you know, in the gym or how strong I yeah. am. I want it to come from within. And I was really working on that. And it was all happening at the same time that then all of a sudden I lost a ton of weight and then had all this... Um, you know, attention again. And it was, it was a really big setback for me for a second because, um, people were like, Oh my gosh, you look so good. I want to look like you. What are you doing? And then I got a lot of, um, you know, affirmation as a coach. A lot of people would be like, Oh, I want you to train me where they would have never asked me to train them before because I yeah. didn't look the type that they were looking at. So, um, so it was a big, a big time for me because I could have either taken that time and been like, oh, I'm so wrong. Self-worth does come from the way I look. Look at all these people that are accepting me now. This is all I've ever wanted. Or what I did, thankfully, was to kind of realize that um, 
no, I don't want to go back into that horrible habit. And I, I do want to push on with this and it's still work in progress. I'm still constantly catching myself, um, you know, where you'll have a negative thought, but I have, what I have now is that that is a, that is a human process and I catch myself and I'm able to catch myself doing that and mm -hmm. then, um, rephrase mm -hmm. my story, like recreate, um, a more positive thought process, um, yeah. which has been super helpful. So, so yeah, awesome. it's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where it all came from. Um, there you go. I don't know if it's longer or shorter. <laughs> I don't know either. I can't remember when we started, but that was good. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I think it's, your story is so relatable to everyone else. And I think it, it really does stand out. Like obviously, and what really stands out with me with your, what, with your message and your story is that it doesn't matter what you're looking like on the inside, whether you are overweight or you're underweight or you've lost a considerable amount of weight and whether it's been through choice or not, it still doesn't fix what's on the inside or what's in your soul or in your head. Um, and I think a lot of yeah. people forget that they want to, they see that amazing external and that's the validation that people seek and you then start, you start getting it. And then like you said, you weren't ready to take all those compliments because it was as a result of an illness and something that you couldn't control yeah. and it made you almost feel even worse. So it's, I think, yeah, it's important the message that we're trying to deliver to uh, women, especially women that we coach um, and who are listening to us and the message that we're driving. Yes, it's great that you want to look good, but it's all about feeling good. Like for me, and I know for you when you coach, my thing is um, feel better, think better, move better. Um, and I think everything that you said encompasses that and it's trying to change that kind of flow, right? Thanks. <laughs> it, That's okay. it's, a, it's a nice little synopsis of my rambling. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It sounds like, well. Wow. Everyone knows where yeah. we're going to start. But I guess, yeah, yeah like we exactly. said with my angle, it's um, yeah. body image hasn't, it's, it comes in different forms. Um, so whilst yours went more on like the physical kind of side there, I've, my background is, or for everyone who doesn't know, when we push it out on Instagram and everyone can actually finally see our video that we put together, um, is that I grew up similar to Mel, um, very high in sports and athletics. Athletics is my thing. I did, I think, try nearly every sport possible that I could at the time or that my mum uh, was able to get me into um, but athletics that was my love um, from the age of like 10 to about 18 um, and that really was the set that set me up um, for all the kind of values and everything I abide by now um, in terms of like the confidence and trying new things pushing my body to its limits um, and yeah I guess for me when the the body image thing hasn't necessarily been, I mean, obviously we all have our days and uh, times when we're not 100% happy with how we're looking that day, but um, that's just normal. That is absolutely normal. We have those days. But for me, I think the bit that I relate to is um, the self-worth. Um, and we, as we discussed yesterday, um, my self-worth um, was really diminished in my early 20s. Um, I went through a big, big phase with a guy Mine all stemmed from a guy and seeking uh, validation um, from a man, or he was a boy at the time, for sure, um, at university. We were men were there, be there, having fun, letting our hair down. Um, but this guy got a ridiculous hold on me that I've never had before in my life. Um, and why should you? Before 20, it's like, it should be having fun and you're young. But uh, this guy... Um, he was naive and he had a lot of insecurities which were put on me and as a young woman uh, to be made felt to be made to feel insecure about my body the way i looked the way i dressed the way i did my hair um that doesn't make you feel good and to have someone that you have fallen in love with at 20 um is a massive deal for them to just say oh my god you look like you look disgusting or why did you choose those or why are you wearing that underwear um and for me that really knocked me for six but um the relationship was toxic uh he was a narcissist his moods would change one minute he absolutely loved me adored me we we're having amazing sex and it was brilliant and then the next thing 
he would come in drunk. It usually was when he was drunk, he lost absolute control of himself. Um, and he would be uh, threatening me or he would um, be giving me a lot of verbal abuse. And his insecurities led um, to come in in the middle of the night, drunk, I'll be asleep, but he'd been out partying with uni and he'd pin me on a chair, make me open up my computer. At that time, we didn't have the likes of uh, Instagram or anything like that. Uh, we did have Facebook, but it was all mainly on a computer to access. So um, he would sit me there and he'd make me log into absolutely everything. And he would go sitting, scrolling through my phone and checking. Um, later to find out when we had broken up. So this all went on for like a couple of years. Like my family hated him. Uh, my friends hated him. Um, they stood by me and I still have them as my best friends today, um, which I'm so grateful for. But they saw me in a whole turmoil. Like it was not pretty. Um, I was crying all the time. And yeah, the confidence was low. But when we uh, broke up, um, when I finally got that confidence and took a leap of faith and literally just said, it is over. And I was out. But um Later finding out he, his insecurities were led from him. Uh, he was cheating on me. I have absolutely no idea how long for. His friends told me when we broke up and I was like, oh, thanks for like letting me uh, have this whole time with a, with a guy or a boy that was uh, doing that to me. Um, and yeah, so we broke it off and his insecurities all led from his family. His mum was cheating on his dad and they broke up and everything he felt about women he didn't trust women and I got the wrath of it and um, to this day from there forwards I've been working on myself and I am 100% independent single 30 um, I am in that mindset I don't need a man but then I've gone the other extreme now where I'm on that spectrum of am I ever going to get a man back in my life or, you know, um, <laughs> after him, after him, I did have a really happy five year relationship, which then did have its ending course. But, um, I did find someone else who I loved and who treated me like an absolute queen. So it's what you put in and just kind of moving forwards and learning from. So I've never let a man like that in my life again. And I think I mentioned it yesterday is someone did come into my life and they, a few guys have, and they've shown those narcissistic tendencies where they're up, down, they're jealous, they can't control themselves. Get out. Like, I don't need you. There's plenty more that. amazing guys out there. We don't need them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think for <laughs> everyone listening, I know obviously you've heard that as well, but get to know even more. Um, yeah. 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 We both have different elements and different angles of how, we've overcome it and yeah you still have to work on it for sure like it, life's a journey it doesn't just end there and I think that's the the beauty of life like we're always and we're constantly learning but we have to understand what we're seeing we're feeling and not to let it happen again or at least learn from those previous experiences right exactly I think um why kind of like through your story and mine and actually lots of women who kind of reached out to both you and me it's like it's it's being it's this idea of being mindful right and we use this mm -hmm. mindfulness like all the time but being mindful of how you're treating yourself and yeah. how you're speaking to yourself and the thoughts that you're having because as soon as you can really lock into that you'll be able to then to make a change right so what exactly what we're saying is um it's not it's, it's okay that like those thoughts will come or you know guys are going to come into your life here and there and even yeah. the thought of like oh do do i need a man to be happy do i you know like do i need someone else to be happy like those thoughts are going to come in our head but it's how do you equip yourself with the tools to be able to realize that that nothing outside is going to dictate your happiness and your worth that comes from within and once you can really yeah. i think uh harp into that you could be a better you can become a better lover, a better mother, friend, um, everything, because you just, it just becomes this, like, you know you, right? And you're not changing for everybody, and you're not letting, you know, like your family had said, you're half the person that you were. They didn't even recognize you when you're in a toxic relationship. Like, that will never happen again. And some of yeah. will, you know, people that you surround yourself should love you for who you are, and if they don't, yeah. then they're not worth being around right and that actually like you said only shows their own insecurities it only shows um you know their own faults really 
and yeah I'm, I'm yeah <laughs> okay yeah. that's the cue that's the cue yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no exactly it's so it's yeah. so true and again like tapping into that we were we then spoke um about like social media so that self-worth like it's having that self-worth internally first and foremost so that you can make those decisions what you see in the media in social media the friendship groups that you have around you or the information that's constantly coming into you how do you digest all that information so what do you absorb what do you keep in and what do you really learn from and what do you know to kind of separate and reject that information because i think there's a there's a fine gap um especially now the more people i talk to and i, I know you have as well is how do you separate that information when you're constantly like we're all guilty of it we all know we scroll through social media at points and you like and it sometimes it winds you up sometimes it makes you happy sometimes it makes you feel inferior some people it makes you feel really sad um or that you're never going to be like uh, this person or whatever it is and i think um i'm big play i'm a big player and a big believer like social media is a powerful tool if you use it correctly um, and it's just being able to filter through. Uh, you get all these influences that we have, especially in our industry. Like in fitness industry, you get people who are posing like no tomorrow, that they don't even break a sweat, that their hair's not greasy, that they've got all this makeup on just to do that one max lift deadlift or whatever it is. And like we all know too well, um, we're not shy of showing our pictures and videos of how ridiculous <laughs> we look. And I think people out here, and I think you ladies who are going to listen to this, um, and even guys, is you've got to have fun. You've got to know what you can filter in, what you can filter out, and know what's real and what's not. And I think me and you, is this is a journey we're already kick-starting now by doing this, is to help people learn and understand what is real and what isn't, and to get away from those toxic environments on social media that don't make you feel good. What do you yeah. think? hundred percent hundred percent I think um it's it's interesting for for me because I'm older so I got like yeah. game from a time you know and well and and mm -hmm. even like you're not as old as me but like even like our generation we didn't really we weren't raised on this idea of social media yeah. yet you and I have probably both um come up with these stories in our head of what a woman should look like what a woman mm -hmm. should act like how she should speak um you know what what success is in our minds and so that it is interesting to me because um I still was I still created these stories in my head from something right and I mean I have gone through therapy and I do know where some of it came from but it's yeah. also I mean back then you had to get out a magazine to look at or you had to watch a tv show or something mm -hmm. Um, um, but it was, it was still around and now it's just like, I'm with, with a teenage daughter who's basically grown up with social media her whole life, even with a mom who I think I, edu I try to educate her. I try to be a good role model on this stuff. You know, you still catch her, um, talking about her body in negative ways. Um, or when she's being positive about her body, it is a very superficial reason why, right? It's, um, yeah. I, I don't want to get into the details. She'll be embarrassed if she listens, but. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, and it is because like, um, we not only consciously, um, will compare ourselves to other people and, you know, looking at these images that are constantly being thrown through on social media and in marketing, um, and even just like the news and, and TV shows that we watch and stuff, I think subconsciously it's happening as well. So you don't even realize that you see probably, you know, anywhere from four to 10,000 images a day. And yeah, all the images yeah, are, ridiculous. yeah, they're all creating basically this, um, whatever you are deciding to look at, it's creating this vision of what life is supposed to look like for you. And so in your subconscious, um, you don't even realize that you're doing it. And that's the scariest part about it is because you can have all, um, you know, the strength in the world to be like, oh, well, this is making me feel bad. So I'm going to cut it out. But then actually there's a lot going on that you don't even, don't even realize. And I think one of the first times I, I really noticed it was, I've, I've always kind of had this battle with myself of feeling like I've got a lot to say and a lot to, um, you know, even just sharing my story and stuff on Instagram was a big thing because I didn't feel like I, my platform for having Instagram was for my family to be able to see yeah. pictures of us as we travel around the world and stuff. And I felt kind of funny to then be like, bring a little bit more of like my, 
my passion and the story that I had kind of kept to myself for a long time out into the public light and, and to even put, you know, coaching thing, coaching tips up and stuff like that onto my Instagram. And one of the reasons why I think if I really reflect on it is because when I would put a post up, I'd get, you know, like 30 likes or something. And then yeah. you, you, as you're scrolling through on, cause I have, you know, these Insta famous people on mine as well. They'll put a picture of themselves up in a bikini and get, you know, thousands of likes. And I would be like, man, I'm actually telling you something that's really worthwhile. <laughs> and this isn't what people want to see, you know? So it was like, yeah. I even have it too, right? Where you're like, uh, social media is like, it's, it's, it's amazing. So. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I've definitely done it before when I've put my, some of my bikini shots up. I've put up when I'm on the holiday on the beach and I've put something really informative on there just because I get their yeah. attention and then I can put the information <laughs> in. I'm like, okay, well, let's see if it works. But yeah, yeah no, exactly. So, it's, um, yeah. what would be your tip then for people with social media? Yeah, so I, they call it kind of this like visual consumption cleanse and um it, it happens after it won't happen overnight but you can start by like trying again it goes back into being mindful um when you're on social media i've i mean i've caught myself doing it during the circuit breaker tons of time where you are just literally the finger flick through yeah and then the, after five minutes of this i'm like what am i doing like i literally am just not mind numbing right um yeah and so i say like get mindful when you're on your social media for a bit if you're really struggling with this and anything that you, um, that definitely causes you like any kind of self doubt, makes you feel poorly about yourself or, you know, any kind of negative thoughts or something, just delete it. It's, there's no purpose of having, you're not going to miss out, uh, for not having it into your feed, you know, get rid of it. Even if it's a friend, like I'm sure they won't, you know, they won't even notice, right? Just get you rid know, of I've it. I've had and people then, definitely mute me. Some people mute me because yeah, I'm not their vibe. Yeah, I'm like, fine, okay. right? Like, I know I don't take I don't take offense to it but and then I think it's not just about getting rid of stuff but it's about putting in um people that inspire you um positive you know positive images images even of just variety so try not to yeah. just if you notice that you're just following that kind of like we said before yeah, if you're just definitely. following like fitness white skinny uh women then like try to add in some more variety right so I always start with like people that inspire you or have kind of that same um, belief system or message that you, yeah. you believe in definitely include those any kind of heroes and stuff like Brene Brown like she's a massive yeah. hero of both of ours like I love her I, I put her in Oprah Winfrey like all these big people I love having having Boss powerful babes. women in my feed yeah, yeah exactly um, Serena Williams is one of mine yeah it just and just yeah. having like yeah. a variety of things that you are you are looking at um, and seeing and I know that like we started to create a document for this because um, there's tons of great stuff out there. Yeah. Um, and like, you, you know, you can, you can share it. We can share it on, on Instagram and stuff, but if you need a place to start, but yeah, I think it's just cleanse out the bad and bring in more good. A hundred percent. And sometimes I think even getting off social media, me and you both love reading. And I think uh, reading is an amazing time, especially like I've been on about it this week about, uh, bedtime routines and things but instead of getting that bedtime routine my trick would be stop scrolling through instagram or facebook or a feed just to get a little bit of happiness take yourself off social media or off your phone an hour before bed get into bed and pick up a book and it doesn't matter what book it is just start reading and it can be 10 pages or whatever and you're doing two things you're getting off that social media vibe before bed and not going to bed with any negative feelings but you're also getting off your screen um, and reading uh, so yeah that would be my tip on that what would um, yeah. I mean we're going to carry on these uh, recordings uh, for everyone so maybe if we wrap it up today because um, I know we we're going to talk about scales and stuff uh, and life's purpose on the scales and scales don't define us but I think that's a whole topic in itself following yeah. on from this so we'll <laughs> leave we'll leave that one um, and then what would your three takeaways be um, from from what we've spoken about, and then yeah, what would your three takeaways be today? So, um, mindfulness. So just like with that social media again, what we're saying, like definitely mm -hmm. start actioning that now. That's something you can do. I mean, everyone is on social media as much, so put it. You know, put a screen time. Um, 
that you can do it on your most people's phones I think like cut yeah. screen time off so that even it gives you a signal that you've been on for, <laughs> yeah it's like yeah look at me <laughs> but I mean those that you know do that cleanse out the bad you know reach out to both of us we'll send you some um you know yeah, great definitely. people to even follow and stuff um yeah. So start by doing that and I think just get mindful with what you're doing. Try to try to get out of all those like sometimes it's okay to do mind numbing things, but if you catch yourself doing it all the time and every bit of spare time you have, then um I think you know, starting to get a bit more mindful about what you're doing and what that can be um causing, both mm -hmm. consciously and subconsciously. Um and then my next one would be yeah, celebrate celebrate successes and fail with enthusiasm. I love that yeah. because we're so afraid of failing and it's such a natural human process. Um, you know, even like with my story without like weight fluctuations, I was like, like, so I thought that that was failing, but I try to tell women all the time. It is like, nobody's life is constant. So no one's weight and no one's energy. It's never like no this. You know, never linear it's enough, never right? Like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, be okay with with that and then not even just about weight like be okay to to push yourself challenge yourself be out there and try something new and if you fail who cares like learn from it adapt from it or just take it as you know yeah. a, a cool story to have to tell someone later i love what you're doing um with uh um the race amazing race with the women thing yeah um I yeah think that's it's awesome it's like really gets people to to try something different even like with the the sock juggling and stuff and have a good laugh i love it it's, it's awesome yeah <laughs> um, that was my yeah, vibe so, and then definitely yeah and definitely celebrate yourself right i think um my last one was um you know tell tell yourself five things that you love about yourself that have nothing to do with uh, yes, the way yes, you look yes 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 uh, yeah was, so it's like you took me up from body. me yesterday <laughs> and i took oh, it from sorry. you okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just but take we, it yeah, from each other yeah. every time yeah exactly exactly <laughs> we did it from in, we did it on instagram yeah. everyone was like so shocked how hard it was but just yeah. you know just get into your space get on your journaling write five things that either you've achieved that you're super proud of or something just about yourself that you love um it can be quirky it can be whatever but love that's yeah. not to do with your body because that's just a big thing it's like we are not just an image for people to look at. We're so much more than that. And I think that that really starts the process of, of falling go, in love yeah. with yourself. So go beyond the surface. Thing. Yeah, go beyond yeah, the surface. Exactly. Yeah, I think <laughs> mine, well, mine are um, speak to yourself like you uh, would speak to someone that you love. I think that's huge. Um, and I think that really is a time that brings on to the next thing I was going to say is acknowledge what you're saying to yourself. So like you said, like the negative thoughts that keep coming into your head how do you um, acknowledge them? And obviously they're coming through your head, so you've got to acknowledge them. But how do you spin it around in some a positive thought or learn to understand why you're thinking about these things? Like ask yourself, why, why did I just call myself that? Or why did I, like a lot of people are very easy or quick to call themselves stupid or oh, I'm such an idiot or oh, I'm this and that rather than I'm an absolute babe and I am an absolute queen. And I am so freaking good at this. Why can't I? Like, it's making us smile already because we know we're at that end where we literally say to ourselves sometimes, like, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. You know, like, <laughs> you've got to back yourself because at the end of the day, yes, you're going to have people supporting you, but you're also going to have people who don't support your journey. So you need to be strong enough in your head and where you're at to know that if someone says, no, you weren't that good, I'd be like, mm, pretty sure I was. You know, like, you've got to have it. Um, yeah. The other thing was your life's purpose is not dictated by the scales. Um, but that's what we're going to touch on uh, next time we join on and we successfully yeah. record, hopefully. Um, <laughs> and then also, <laughs> finally, is uh, I'm really hoping I managed to say this properly this time, Mel. It is yeah. <laughs> um, your self worth matters. Like, beyond that like, people are so used to not putting themselves first or find or think they're selfish by putting themselves first but like we've said before and in all of this just today and yesterday is that if you're not putting yourself first your health isn't right your mind isn't right then how are you going to help anyone else in your journey or anything else if you aren't there if you've got kids if you're not 100 percent there or 90 percent knowing who you are and where you're like going and what you want and what you like what you don't like how can you tell other people or help other people as well you know like we're all learning and 
this is stuff that we're saying that like, you can't just get it just like that. It takes time, but it's daily practice and daily investment that will that will work. And it's yeah, it's been years. Like what people will be seeing us of us to now just talking is is years. That stuff that happened with the guy yeah. was tw- uh, not yeah. twenty years ago was like ten years ago for me. You know, um, it's a long time, and people just think, oh, that's again. But they look at the surface and what people are like. Because we're in, yeah. and I think we go a lot further than the quick. surface. Yeah, and it's quick to like, um, if you take a, if you fall down a step, to just want to keep falling down and give up. And it's like, no, that's life, right? Like, like I said, I'm still. I went on a bike ride yesterday, and I caught myself uh, when you're bent over uh pulling my <laughs> it's gonna be too much pulling my shorts yeah. over the roll that kind of had come over oh, I do too. and then I yeah yeah and I quickly think to myself right why this is this because I've learned this and this is after years of practice and yeah. I picked up that I did it and then I had a quick chat with myself did I do that because that is more comfortable or did I do that because I'm I'm this has been an area that I've always been ashamed of mm-hmm. and then I was like no I definitely did that because I was quick like a shade like it was just a natural habit because I'm ashamed of showing that roll and so then I quickly went into like my positive affirmations. Yeah, like, yeah. Look at my badass, like strong legs, like you know, <laughs> killing this ride. Like, you know, so like I'm yeah. going into those positive, positive thoughts and rewriting mm, that, that quick yeah, negative like thing. That. But, but yeah. I think like, you know, that just happened yesterday. So like you said, this is, um, it's ongoing. You've been working on this for years. You know, I'm, I'm probably newer in the journey, but I always, you know, I think it's a process and don't ever, don't ever feel bad for, um, being who you are at this moment, right? It's just yes, we're all we're, we're all constantly yeah. just like building and stuff. So I nice. Think, yeah. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're gonna leave it at that. And I am literally holding my breath now. That I'm gonna stop recording. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna end it, and I'm gonna save it. And if I don't nail this one, I'm never recording again. <laughs> you are taking <laughs> full technology. <laughs> Please, we just spoken to ourselves for like the next the last hour. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna <laughs> stop and I'm gonna end this and I'm gonna spend the next like ten minutes trying to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. See you later, chick. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye. See you. Have a good day. Bye.